Today, guys, I want to talk with you about traveling for competition. And it's something that's going to happen to pretty much everybody. And it could happen to you very quickly. Because when we really think about it, how consistently can you only fight from your hometown? And if you're only fighting from your hometown, you're very limited in how much your name is going to grow. So most fighters, and it happened to me in my very first fight, end up traveling for competition. But a lot of people don't give you all the tips that you should know about getting in an airplane and traveling to somewhere different. So today guys I'm gonna pass along all the experience I've learned by traveling around the world flying to places like Japan, China, Dubai, all over Europe and then of course lots of travel within the States and Canada. What have I learned from all this travel and what tips can I give you to make sure you avoid any problems or mishaps and that will allow you to be your best version on fight night. That is what we're talking about today guys. All right guys, as previously mentioned, my first fight was out of town, which meant right away getting on a plane and traveling somewhere. And then I had a short little stint of my amateur career where I could call Victoria where I live, sort of my home base for competition. But as soon as I decided I wanted to take a real go at this, really try and see how good I could be, I learned very quickly that fighting out of my hometown is probably not realistic. There's a few guys who can get away with it. Maybe if you live in Las Vegas or down in Los Angeles or one of the fight hubs, you might be lucky enough to do most of your fights in your hometown but travel is just a reality of the sport and if you don't prepare for it you don't have any tips you will not perform as well on fight night so with my experience I have loads of tips for you guys today grab a pen grab a paper and make sure you're writing all this stuff down because I want all my subscribers winning their fights I want to pass on all the knowledge I have so guys let's get started point number one this is a super important one something I've made a habit of basically since the beginning of my career I recognize that I cannot carry everything on the plane there's no way I'm just taking too much stuff with me so I have my check-in but if you throw everything in your check-in and it gets lost which has happened to me you get to the airport all of a sudden it's like oh shoot where's my bag well what are you gonna do if that bag never shows up are you gonna go okay I have to pull the plug and I can't compete that is a super waste after a month and months of training so my tip is always take all the essentials with you in your carry-on well for me it's mouth guard you do not want to leave your custom mouth guard to go somewhere else because then you're going to be fighting in just a generic one and it can just mess up your whole fight number two i always take my cup with me i want my own cup it won't wreck the fight if i have to borrow somebody else's but it's something that i want and then number three the shorts and these are all three small little items that i can easily carry on and having those if i lose my main bag i can still compete but if i lose my mouth guard it's basically fight over that's the main one for me. Always decide what the essentials are, what do you need, and make sure you put those in your carry-on bag. It seems simple, but I've seen people actually have to pull the plug on their fight because they went, oh shoot, my mouth guard is somewhere off in the world in my or in my check-on bag. And what happened to me when I won my second glory belt against Sergey Adamchuk, my bag went missing, and then all of a sudden I was like, oh shoot, well, I have my mouth guard, I have my shorts, I have my cup, but I don't have my scale or all the food that I need that I bring with me to make sure I'm cutting away right so you can't bring everything with you but try to make sure you bring all the important stuff because not having that scale for two or three days really really messed up the weight cut and I ended up over cutting because I couldn't check my weight basically every couple hours like I normally do next point when you get on the airplane when I first started getting on airplanes I was super low energy I mean you're cutting weight you're exhausted from training camp and you're just feeling like oh okay I just want to fall asleep I just want to stay here for the whole plane ride but that is a mistake it doesn't matter if you're driving somewhere or if you're on the plane get up go to the back little cabin and do some stretching do a little bit of movement make sure that when you get off the plane you're not feeling creaky it's maybe not as important if we're talking about an hour or two hour flight but it's still worth doing your time up in the plane can be problematic you can get a lot of swelling so if you can get some movement happening and you can get some maybe compression socks or some compression clothes before you get on the plane ride I I find it really helps me but that movement it's all about that movement for me I gotta get on I just gotta throw my arms out office obviously I'm not like in the in the aisles punching or something I'm just you know touching my toes moving my shoulders and my arms and just making sure that when I get off the plane I don't feel like a complete wreck now quickly moving on from there I want to talk about our next point which is related to the plane ride and generally we are water loading it's a big part of making weight we're water loading and if you are traveling only days before you compete you're probably thinking 
think, oh shoot, when I'm on the airplane, I need to be water loading. But I think that is a mistake. When you're up at elevation, it's happened to me a couple times, you're up super high, you know, 30, 40,000 feet, you're drinking a lot of water, drinking a lot of water. I mean, aside from having to run to the washroom, which is super annoying, I find that my body retains that water a lot more. And I find it very difficult to lose it after. So I have stopped water loading on plane rides. I water load lots before. When I get on the plane, I stop. And then when I get off, as soon as we land, I start drinking water, but no water loading on the plane. It's something that I have started doing. It was suggested to me by one of the guys in the industry I really, really look up to. And it's just something that I like using and I wanted to pass it on to you guys. Oh, and also next point, still on the plane, we're talking about bringing your own food for the flight. Because let's be real, airplane food, some of it you can eat, but a lot of it you can't, especially if you're cutting down on carbs and they bring out this big thing of pasta and you're like, well, I can't eat any of that. But maybe you're also just trying to stay away from high sodium food. So I find that bringing my own little bag of nuts and maybe a couple little pieces of fruit will usually help get me through a lot of that plane ride and not have to put food in my body that I really don't want to. So traveling with a little bit of food, guys, very, very smart choice. Now guys, when we are traveling, one of the things that we always want is just a hassle-free situation. We want to get on the plane, we want the plane to land, we want to get to the hotel, and that's it. But very rarely is that the case. But if you're one of those people who gets so stressed, so upset every time something doesn't go as planned, something you know derails from what you were hoping it would be, and it just makes the whole situation more stressful, plus all the fight stress you have, sometimes it's just too much. So I try to suggest to people that you should be prepared for hassles, prepared for things not going well during travel, and just relax. Basically, you'll get there when you get there. I've had flights before, whole travels from Victoria to the opposite side of the world where it has taken me 36 hours. And it really should have only taken like 26. I'm like, okay, I'll be there in 26 hours. At least when I get there, I can relax. And I'm not somebody who sleeps well on the plane. So when you start drawing out these trips, you know, it's like, get on the plane, and then you have four hour layover and then you have another plane ride and then you have this another massive layover and then the flight's delayed and then you get there and there's issues getting your baggage or something. You know, just recognize that it's part of the travel experience and just calm yourself and just go, you know what, I'll relax. When I get to the hotel, the time before, it's just, there's not much you can do about it. And if you have that mindset, which I've sort of adopted over the last number of years, it's made travel so much easier. It doesn't really get in my head. I used to let it get in my head. Oh, the, the, you know, the travel didn't go as planned and I just lost out on five hours of extra rest time. Is that gonna affect me fight day? Don't worry about it. Just, you know, it is what it is and you just stay calm and everything will turn out well. Now, time change, guys. Obviously, we have to talk about time change. It's such an important factor. Now, really, for me, I have found that traveling from the West Coast of Canada over to the East Coast of the United States, it doesn't really affect me. We're talking about three hours time difference. It's not a big deal, especially for me because I sleep so much during fight week. I'm resting so much that that little three hour shift is nothing. So if you're competing somewhere where there's that tiny little shift in time, I would really say, you know, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Now, when we start traveling internationally and there's big time differences, yes, this becomes an issue. It has been a massive issue for me. My very first Bellator fight, kickboxing, over in Hungary, I was done. I was so wiped from the jet lag. I remember being in the ring, I was fighting, and I'd see the punch come, I'd get hit, and then I'd be like, and block. And it just things were not clicking. But I was just wrecked from this terrible sleep pattern that I had. I got over there, my brother and I were falling asleep around five in the afternoon. This was for multiple days in a row. We would wake up around 9 p.m., we'd be up all night, and then in the morning around seven, we'd be like, okay, we need to go back to sleep. And that was our three days before competition. Now, since then, Ever since then, I learned that I need to go to Europe or Asia seven days in advance minimum. If you're shifting time nine or 10 hours, I find that seven days is sort of what gets me to that point where I'm like, okay, on fight day, I'm feeling a little more dialed in and I'm, my, my sleep pattern is pretty much on point. And you have to remember that when you're competing, you don't want to be sleeping the days before. And that's happened to me and I've made mistakes. So if you are traveling internationally, make sure you make the time to go early. And it's so important to me that pretty much every time I've gone early, I go on my own. I don't have any cornermen with me. I travel completely on my own. I get there, I hang out for three or four days on my own. And some people might go, oh, that sounds awful, but it's 100% worth it. If I can't have people come with me, I will make the trip on my own, go solo. It doesn't matter, just getting there, getting my sleep pattern dialed in 
early so that at least one or two days before the fight, I'm like, okay, at least I'm on track here. And if I'm competing at 9 p.m., at 9 p.m., I'm up and I'm awake and I'm not sitting in bed going, whoa, I'm so tired. So important to recognize time difference. And many of you have traveled before. You should look at your past experiences with the difference in time and know how it affects you and, you know, prepare appropriately for that. Now, I don't really have any massive tips on making time difference better for yourself. Like you should take these vitamins or do this. It's just basically get there. I try to right away, make sure I go to sleep late at night. And if I do need to take a nap, it's a small one, but really, unfortunately, for most people and for myself, I just found it's trial and error. You have to get there. You have to try it once and then make adjustments next time and then make adjustments the next time. And then hopefully bit by bit, you kind of dial it in. Now, next guys, let's talk about a hotel. As soon as you leave your hometown, you're going to be in a hotel and hotels always have their issues. What issues have arisen for me? Well, first of all, you get places like when you're in Italy and you have your window and right outside the window is a big major road and just everybody's honking over there all the time. And I remember going to bed at 2 a.m. people going by and honking and then 6 a.m. the traffic starting again people are honking up all night or you have somebody like an awful neighbor who's just so loud and they're partying had that before 1 a.m. in the morning the night before I'm fighting and the neighbors are just making so much noise so the first tip that I have is go up to reception as soon as you get there and just explain the situation. Like, oh, just guys, so you know, I'm gonna be competing this week. It's super important to me that I get my sleep on point. Is there anything you can do? Is there anywhere in the hotel you can put me where I'm on the quiet side of the hotel? And maybe if you have a corner unit where I only have one neighbor, so it you know minimizes the chance of having two people on either side of you who are gonna make noise. Just anything you can do is super helpful. And I just basically take that approach and every time people are so accommodating and ever since I started doing that, I've had so much more luck with having a nice hotel room that is quiet. But if sleep is still something you struggle with, for me, for me personally, like a, a little noise. I could be in the room sleeping and I, somebody goes and I'm up. So I have to look at other things I can do. Obviously I take my earplugs. I try to take items now that will make noise in the room, the white noise. Could be a fan. You can bring your laptop and put on fan noise. There's just things like that which kind of drown out all the other noises in the hotel. Somebody walking down the hallway being too loud. I don't want to hear it. It's going to wake me up. I've had so many times in hotel rooms where I'm not kidding you. I get woken up somewhere between 10 and 15 times per night. And you just don't want that happening. So try to recognize, are you a heavy sleeper? Are are you a light sleeper? If you're a light sleeper, you want to make sure that you are asking, making those special requests to the hotel staff and bringing along items that are going to help you sleep better. If you're somebody who you're like, oh, I need my pillow. Like I need a specific pillow. Don't go to the hotel and just assume they're going to have a good pillow for you. Just take your own. Just doing things like that make a world of difference and you don't always think about them until you're there. Two more points for this episode. Now, the next thing I want to talk about was actually a massive issue for me. And we are talking about having your pickup arrangements at the airport set, dialed in, no mistakes. It's about 10 years ago for me, I was on my third professional fight and I was just told, you know, oh, somebody's going to pick you up. They didn't tell me who, they didn't really tell me what, they just said, somebody's going to pick you up, they'll be there, they'll find you. And I just took their word for it and I went, oh yeah, no problem, okay. So I arrive at New York at one in the morning, I'm looking around, Nobody's got my name on, on a sign. Waited around for about 20 minutes, end up having to go to a payphone and call somebody. And they're like, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, there's not going to be anybody to pick you up. There was a little miscommunication error and you just have to take a taxi. Like, wow, that's a great way to treat an out of town fighter who's coming to compete for your promotion. So have everything locked in. Don't just assume people are going to show up for you. And again, we already talked about when things go wrong, we're talking more on the flight, but fight week in general, when things go wrong, don't let it throw you off too much. That one definitely frustrated me and threw me off. And I'm still a little bitter about the whole experience of not having somebody there to pick me up. Just kind of leaving me high and dry as the out of town fighter to do my own thing, make my own way. When they had their own hometown guys, I was fighting one of their hometown guys who were probably at home sleeping at that point. Definitely not cool. All right, guys, in terms of food, super important, obviously, fight week. You want to be eating the right foods to make your weight cut. But what happens when you get there and the hotel restaurant is terrible? It doesn't have any of the food you want. Sure, you can make special requests, but for me, what I've learned is I want a grocery store. And I want to know what the situation with the grocery store is. So as soon as I find out what hotel I'm going to, right away, I get on Google and I'm like, okay, the grocery store is, oh shoot, it's three kilometers away. I can't walk there and I'm probably not going to be going every day. So I need to pre-plan how much food I need to pack with me. You know, my granola bars, my rehydration drinks, all those type of things, which you might not be able to find in a different city, different country, whatever the situation is. But if you're fortunate enough and you, you know, get onto Google and you're like, oh, look at that one 
kilometer away, there's a grocery store. Perfect. I don't need to pack all my own food. This is a very important thing to research before. I didn't used to do it and I paid the price many times getting somewhere and then finding out that the grocery store is 20 kilometers away and every time I want to go there, I have to get in a taxi, do the whole trek. I don't bring enough food back to the hotel and then I have to do it again the next day. It's just so much easier if you pre-plan exactly how far everything is away and have your food situation dialed in so important it's a tip which will serve you very well all right guys i hope this episode will help some of you guys out there for your future travel for competitions if you think it will if you enjoyed the video guys give it a like if you haven't already join the channel and get subscribed train hard guys i'll see you back here soon for another video